I'm with a company called EMS, which is Education Management Solutions. And I'll talk a little bit about who we are and what we do, and I'll show you some examples of um, what we're doing. We focus mainly in the medical, nursing, uh, healthcare fields, which is where a lot of uh, video capture is becoming very important because they're concerned primarily with patient safety. They're concerned with the capability of being able to replicate complex cases that they can't see every day. So the idea is to be able to video capture those and be able to debrief uh, medical students, be able to debrief code teams, uh, that sort of thing. However, we are translating this technology into all sorts of different types of uh, industries and all sorts of different types of institutions on the education side. Uh, for example, we're now getting feedback from um, law schools wanting to be able to tape and debrief their law students as they do mock trials and cross-examinations, that sort of thing. So, I'll show you a little bit about what we do. Um, can you hear me in the back? back? Okay. I'm trying to be funny. It's not working, I know. Uh, talk a little bit about us, e EMS. Uh, we're a relatively new company, founded in 1994. Um, we are located fairly locally, Exton, Pennsylvania, which is obviously a suburb of Philadelphia here. Uh, we have 55 employees and we've had a lot of growth. Two years ago we had 12 employees, so we've grown tremendously and in fact we've been recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the fastest growing companies in the United States for the past couple of years and probably we're going to hit that mark again uh, for 2009. It's been tremendous growth potential and again, a lot of this has been focusing on the healthcare environment, but we're starting to now migrate into all different aspects of both industry and education. Um, just, just a partial list of some of the customers. We do a lot of business worldwide. We're doing uh, projects in the Middle East right now, in Dubai and in Qatar. We're doing them in Singapore. Um, Spain, we have a project. Australia is a big place for us as well. So you might recognize some of these names. This is just a partial list. There's a lot more to it than, than this here. But what do we do exactly? So what we do is we take audio-visual technology, cameras, microphones, and capture different types of learning so that when a student goes and looks at that, they get a debriefing stage. So it gives them that capability of watching themselves and being able to be either assessed or evaluated, or maybe there's a checklist involved. Now there's different styles of learning, as we all know, from one end of the spectrum being a safe learning environment where there's no grading, there's no critical in terms of, it's more, hey, it's okay to make mistakes. The idea is for it to be a learning process. And then you get to the other side of the spectrum where it's sort of what they call a high stakes exam, where you'd be grading and evaluated. Medical doctors going to the medical boards, for example, what would be high stakes, pass, fail, if you don't, Pass, you don't get to be a doctor. So we find that people go in different ranges all over that. So our system is designed to interface whether it's a safe learning environment or whether it's a, a, a high stakes uh, evaluation and assessment environment. So what what is it aid in doing? So a lot of our focus right now is on interpersonal skills, people interacting. For a great example is student doctors. We do a lot of work in the medical schools where they actually tape, they videotape doctors doing exams with what are called standardized patients, and these are simulated patients or actors who have been taught to portray certain types of cases, like emphysema or appendicitis or whatever. So what they would do is we would film that interaction between that student doctor and also that, uh, that simulated patient so they could go back and review and see how they did not only interpersonal skills, but did they ask the right questions? Did they introduce themselves? Did they make eye contact with the patient? So there's a lot of parts to that as well. Task training skills, and this is the ability to repeat over and over again a particular type of task, be able to capture that and, and be able to uh, hopefully assess the, the student and the learner, their capabilities and, and how they're progressing, being able to track their progress in terms of learning the skill. And then also team-based skills, and this becomes important also in the medical field, primarily um, in terms of uh, hospitals, code teams, working together because you'll oftentimes have a doctor working with a, a nurse, you'll have different roles that they need to fill, how do they communicate, who takes the leadership role, all those types of things. So we cover a lot of that type of stuff. So obviously what are the benefits to using audio-visual technology to assess, to learn, and some of them, and I hear this a lot actually, it's dual learning. The student or learner learns not only as a participant, which as we know is now interactive, and given today's students that's a big part of it, participating, not just listening to someone tell them how to do it, but actually do it. So not only do they do it as a participant, but then when you have audiovisual technology, they learn as an observer. They get the opportunity to observe themselves or maybe observe other people who have done that same task. 
It's interactive, obviously, when you're videotaping something like this. Any type of skill, whether it's simply interpersonal or simply a task training, it becomes more hands-on, it's more interactive. Gives them that capability of doing a self-evaluation. Our system is designed also so that at the end of an encounter, or at the end of a video, the students can actually log in to our system, which is a web-based system, and actually fill out a self-evaluation. They might grade themselves, they might just make notes on how they felt about it. In a doctor's environment, they might make notes as to what their next follow-up would be. What prescriptions would they make? What uh, follow-up tests would they prescribe? So there's a lot of different parts to that as well. Accountability. We all have seen ourselves on video. You never quite see yourself the way you think you're going to see yourself. So it gives that student that capability, being able to see what they're doing and then take accountability for that. And do some critical thinking. Did I do that right? Could I have done that better? How did I do that? And then a big part of it for things like medical schools and law schools is the ability to accurately document their assessment. If I'm a medical student and I'm trying to pass to become a doctor and I have a faculty member that fails me, is it subjective? Is it objective? At least with a video, we can go back and we can say, well, here's why you got the grade you got. Here's what you didn't do that you should have done. And uh, we have a lot of faculty, um, a lot of uh, faculty members at a lot of institutions on the medical uh, college side where they keep the videos for four or five years after the student has graduated. There's a, there's a trail. You can, you can follow the learner also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of uh, videos and some assessment tools and how it kind of all fits in together. And um, hopefully this will work. Now this is going to be a student doctor. This right here is an actress, what's called a standardized patient, someone who acts as if they have a particular ailment. And you'll see a student doctor. I'm Dr. Tracy Viola. Um, I'm yeah, one of the student doctors here at Nine College. Um, what, what is your name? Brenda Marcus. Okay. How would you like me to refer to you, Mrs. Brenda? Okay. Okay. Um, so, what brings you? Okay. Um, how long has the pain been? So you can see, if you see these tabs up here, above, you see evaluator response, student response, checklist. During a live recording or afterwards of a recording, you could have somebody fill out a checklist or an evaluation form that could all be digitally stored. It's an actress. It's called a standardized patient. Yeah. So in addition to all this, and you could fill this out, and this could be any type of scale. Our system is very flexible. You could make it one, two, three, four, you know, poor, excellent, okay, whatever you want to make it, A, B, C, D, one to 100. You can also click under this button and add free text if there was something in particular you wanted to do. Our system also, typically we use multiple cameras. And in a situation like this, if you see this button that says switch, this is a two camera view because in addition to the interpersonal skills which are showing here, oftentimes a student doctor will have to do a physical exam. Now you can see from this angle if that doctor had to go and, and, and percuss or touch them in a certain way, you wouldn't get that view. So you also typically set up a camera on the other side of the room so it kind of crosses each other so the person could switch the camera view as they watch the physical exam. So that might be another thing. Another part of our software that's unique is that it allows you to bookmark individual spots of the video. And a bookmark basically is a, just a note spot, just a placeholder. So during that video, especially in a simulation environment where it's a, a code type situation, I'll show you one of those in a second, um, where it might last for half an hour, you might want to not be bothered trying to find that one really critical point of that video to, to, do, to show the student for their assessment. You might be able to bookmark that particular spot so you could click right there and take the video right to that spot. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. And I'll show you another one. Um, this one is more team-based. And before I show this, it's, uh, there will be a woman who's wailing. She is an actress. So don't <laughs> Sometimes I go to a trade show and people hear this and she's a good actress. But you'll see this next one is more of a team-based environment. So the woman on the bed is an actress. You can see the doctor. She has just had a baby. Now they're using what's called a sim baby, which is a, a robotic baby, which can uh, give off certain types of vital signs. The baby's struggling. The man with the stripe on his shirt is also an actor. 
Now, nursing educators will see this and they get very upset because A, no one's taking care of the patient. No one's paying attention to her at all. She's obviously in distress. No one's taking care of ushering the father out of the way. He's peering over, getting involved. So these are the types of things when you get involved in a simulation or a simulated exercise, you might not be aware of exactly what you're doing. You're so caught up in one aspect of it, you're not environmentally aware of what you're doing. It's videos like this that allow them to go back and say, hey, who is doing what? Who is in charge of what? Who is responsible for taking care of the mother? Who is in charge for getting the father out of the way? Who's responsible for those types of things? And you can see on here where you see role and candidate. There are different names up here. So with our system, Emma Walker, if you click on her tab, you can give her a complete evaluation, whether it's, again, safe learning environment, where it's not graded, or it could be a graded environment. And you'll see that there's her picture up on the left there. If you click on Alex Nichols, you'll get Alex's picture up there. So it's multimedia, so you make sure in a multi uh, learner environment that you're evaluating the right student. That becomes very important. You'll also notice there's a team tab, and this is uh, important for the interpersonal uh, team interactions, leadership, cooperation, those types of things. So in addition to having an individual learner performance, you might have a team-based tab that will allow you to do an assessment and evaluation on the team as a whole. Does your company hire the actors and actors? No. What in, in, in healthcare environments, medical schools, and in, um, in uh, nursing schools, and even hospitals now have their own simulation centers, there's a group of people who are called standardized patients, and what they do is uh, they are trained to go and, and, and portray different cases, whether they're in some, uh, in, in some institutions, the standardized patients can be the local theater group. From that, from that school, or it might be somebody who's more, uh, more heavily trained to actually portray specific types of diseases. Some of these can get very heavy. There's a series of um, simulations called end of life, where basically it's how do you break bad news? What happens if the patient dies? How do you talk to the, to the relatives? How do you handle that? And that becomes a very important part of the so-called bedside manner, but how do, you, how do you usher them out of the waiting room? Do you, what, one of our institutions, we do, um, we've done numerous of these throughout the world, but in one of our institutions, not only do they have the room set up with cameras where the actual uh, simulations take place, but they have a, a waiting room, a simulated waiting room. And they have the actors waiting in that waiting room, and they, they actually videotape the students coming in. How do they address the, 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 the family members? Do they take them out of them? Do they give them privacy? You know, so there's a, a lot of parts and pieces to that. But no, we don't provide that. That's typically done by the institutions that provide that. We provide the digital audio visual technology in terms of capturing with cameras and microphones, and then our software, which is a web-based system, which allows them to manage all that. I think that covers all of uh, the thing. Questions? Yes? So are you just doing this for medical? We are expanding to all different um, types of institutions right now. As I said, uh, law schools are a big thing right now, doing mock trials. Um, we're also involved, believe it or not, in pharmaceutical. Now pharmaceutical is becoming big. How do they handle uh, interpersonal re relations? How do they handle privacy issues? How, even to the point where we have one institution that has us uh, measuring, um, assessing them, capturing them as they're counting pills. I mean, literally, to that extent. Uh, it could also be um, in sales, another part of it is sales. I mean, you could debrief and show people that are training to be salesmen for any industry. How do they react to their customers? How do they respond to certain things that customers say? You know, do they make a connection? Do they cover the topics of their product that they're supposed to cover? So it was, again, a wide range. But mostly it's interpersonal type skills. It's task training, which is a repetitive type of, of skill, or a team-based environment. So you get that interaction between the team itself. And that's what we do. Any other questions? I do have a question. Sure. Um, are you familiar with the um, simulation programs for nursing? Yes. Um, do you have, like, for instance, shock management? Is there like an area on the internet that we can go and access and evaluate before we purchase? People with? Before we purchase anything, before we commit to anything, is there a We can evaluate that? Well, with our system, uh, we're actually trying to develop something like that um, because this is a very big growth industry, as you're probably aware. And simulation is becoming very big, capturing the video is very big. So we're kind of developing in that. But the one thing that we recommend is, especially if you're local to this area, or pretty much anywhere, but um, visiting a lot of our existing customer base and, and seeing the ones, like for example, here at Villanova University with their new simulation center, that's all our equipment there. 
uh, and that's a great opportunity to go and see how they do it and see how they uh, apply that. Now, th the way our module works as of today, no, we don't have a here, take it for 30 days and see how it works because we have to install cameras. There's a cost but to that. Your company is strictly the recording and then feedback of the recording. Right. We don't, we do don't, we don't provide the content. So in other right. words, like we don't create, here's a scenario, right. you know, an end of life scenario. We, there are companies that do that though. There are companies that do that. They create different types of either standardized patient or simulation uh, scenarios and they'll provide those content. The reason that's not a bigger business, as it were, is that if I took 25 different institutions and said, give me a scenario for end of life, I'd get 25 different scenarios. Because every institution wants to do it a different way, maybe has a different learning objective. So we've looked into that. Hey, we can provide content. You buy the system, we'll automatically give you, you know, 10 free simulations or 10 scenarios or whatever. The problem is when we looked at that, we went to our existing user base and said, all right, we want 10 basic scenarios. Not, nobody matched up. Everybody wanted to get a different thing out of it. So that, that becomes a, But our company, with our experience, will help our customers through that process. So you want to develop one in anaphylaxis. Well, here's what we've seen. Here's what other people have done. And our user group is very active, and that's a big part of it. Um, in addition, here locally, Villanova is a customer of ours, Drexel College of Medicine, Drexel School of Nursing, um, Penn, University of Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, the University of Dentistry and Medicine in New Jersey, uh, Lancaster General uh, Hospital School of Nursing. I mean, there's literally, in the, within 100 miles, there's probably 25 customers around here. So our user group is very active in exchanging information. I was just going to ask, so who are your producers and your video producers for this? There is no video producer. So this is all created by the team that manages the simulations at the individual institutions. For example, here at Villanova, if you go across the street, because there are simulation centers literally across the street here. If you go there, their, their staff there not only creates the content, they write up the simulations, working with the faculty. The faculty may, might approach them and say, you know, I really want to do something uh, about somebody with, uh, that needs an appendectomy. So they would help them create that scenario. And they would not only manage uh, that content and then the scoring and all that, but they would also manage the video of it all. And it's not really, even though you saw the production, it's high quality video, there's not a lot of, it's just capturing. It's just capturing the video. There's not much production value to it. The simulation center that Villanova has, is that for one department or is that for all departments? That's a great question. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's for all departments, and that's typically what we're seeing. Even though a certain department might create a, a simulation center or even a hospital, typically they're finding multi-use for it. Not only training their interns, not only training their nursing, but they might train the, uh, the EMTs, first responders. They might train them how do they respond to certain things. Uh, we also have a mobile unit that goes with our unit, which you can take anywhere. So it's basically a three little cameras and two little laptops. And you can literally put it in a backpack, take it outside, and set up a car crash. And they could literally do a, a first responder with a, you know emergency medical services showing up. What do they do? How do they respond to the environment? You know. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking from your psychology department. Counseling. Communication. Communication. Counseling. Communication. Child advocacy is a big thing for us as well. Education. Absolutely. You know, future teachers. A absolutely true. Yeah, and, and this is wow. this is why we've grown so rapidly in the past three or four years. So your company is pretty much just, um, if you grew it, like communication scenarios, business scenarios, somebody else would produce that, and you would just sort of aggregate the content, develop a website, and then market it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, well, and again, what we see is, uh, for example, when we get approached by different people outside of the medical industry, which is really our biggest growth area, if, uh, but if, like with law schools and they come to us, mm -hmm. they per usually have in their head a pretty good idea of what they want to do. They have an idea of what they want to capture. You know, we want to capture this type of trial or that type of cross-examination. So they in their head, the curriculum is already in their head and they're probably already doing something maybe not capturing a video, but they're probably doing it in some sort of mock simulation anyway. They just haven't been capturing it. So what our system does is, hey, you're already doing something like that? Look, we'll set it up so not only are you going to capture all that information and be able to debrief, but we'll help you through the process of creating that scenario and putting it in here electronically so that it's web-based and accessible by any of your faculty members. Um, and you can have all the scoring and reporting all done electronically in here. This way, too, you can keep the data. You might keep those videos for as long as you want to keep them. And a good example is child advocacy centers where they interview children of possible child abuse. 
In many states, the laws are that they have to hold those videos until they turn 18. In one state, I know for particular, they have to keep the videos of these interviews with children for eight years after they turn 18. So if the kid is six when he's interviewed, he's got 12 years plus eight years, they've got to keep that video for 20 years. Now how do you do that it's in the way they used to do it, if they recorded it, and it's better to record for child advocacy because you don't want that child to have to go through the experience of talking about it again and again and again. So they captured on video one time, they used to burn them in DVDs, and there'd be a whole library room filled with DVDs. How did you find that one from a case six years ago, if you needed to find it? Our system's all web-based, it's all indexed, so you can search by date, search by uh, child, search by interviewer, search by whatever, and it allows you that capability of going back and finding those videos in a second. So there's advantages to that as well. Also, following the student. If a student, first year medical student goes through, you can watch their progress. You can search for all videos by that student throughout the entire career of an institution. And you can see them progress. You can say, Here's how, here was your first simulation. This is how you did it. Now look at where you are today. We're also seeing people take these, especially medical students, taking the videos, in addition to handing a resume, having a burned DVD of their, you know, their simulation, saying, here's, here's an example of my work. Here's how I, I did on interpersonal skills. Here I, here's how I did on diagnosing or, or history taking for a patient or diagnosing you know, diseases or whatever. And how would the student do that through your system? Yeah. They would, they would be able to download The system, the, again, the institution owns the videos. You know, so they can determine who has right to what. And there are certain privacy issues. Some institutions, it's a web-based system. It can be as open as, it's all logged in with password. It could be as open as a student could log in, type in their password, and see any of their own videos, see anybody's videos if you want to give them that access. Uh, but in many cases, the institutions are concerned. They don't want that video to go up on YouTube. You know, maybe there's a, a test that they've done. They don't want that information out to the second year students from the third year students. So there's some amount of control of the videos that you have to maintain. But yeah, as much information or as much access you want to give individuals you can. I really like the theatrical piece. Yeah. Because when you want to present a tough concept, to me that's such a great thing. You don't have to worry about violating anyone's privacy. Right? That's correct. Oh, I love that. That is, that is excellent. Yeah, and you're also finding that to talk about how you talk about, say, for example, end of life. You know, if I'm teaching someone how to handle that, and we talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm the instructor, and I say, okay, you should do this, you should do that, it, it's easy to sit here and talk about it. Now, put me in an environment where I'm actually going to do it, and even though I know it's simulated, even though that person hasn't really lost a loved one, for example, I still have to find the words. I still have to, and the immersion, the suspension of disbelief becomes very big, and that's why being able to step back, the instructor's not in the room, it's all being captured on video, the instructor's in another room watching, so they can't get visual clues from the instructor, or it becomes very powerful, very powerful learning tool.